Greetings. I welcome those who are gathered in the sanctuary this morning, as well as those who are worshiping virtually, as we gather in one spirit to worship our God as St. Luke's United Church of Christ in Independence, Missouri. Today, we will mark the beginning of the season of Epiphany. Our focus in these weeks will be the ways in which the presence of God is revealed to us and how we are to respond to that revelation. We will be guided by the example of the Magi who followed the star only they seemed to have noticed as it guided them to the place they needed to be in order to find the Christ child. In our epiphany journey, we will search for what it is that is going to be revealed to us about God, about what God is up to, and about how we can take our place in the narrative of God's story. Holy Communion will be included in this morning's worship service. Holy Communion is a gift of God for the people of God. As such, the communion table is open to everyone who wishes to participate, regardless of your denominational affiliation, congregational membership, or lack thereof. Those worshiping in person should have found individually packaged communion elements at the tables as you entered the sanctuary. If you would like to participate in communion and did not pick yours up, you are invited to get them now. Hold on to those and we will receive communion together as a congregation after the blessing on the bread and the cup during the worship service. If you are worshiping virtually, I encourage you to gather something to serve as elements of communion and participate as part of the congregation as we worship together, receiving God's light to guide our way and God's strength for our journey. Those worshiping in person are invited to a time of fellowship and refreshments in the fellowship hall following this morning's worship service. Today is the final call for poinsettias. Whether you ordered one or not, if you have mercy on the poinsettias that remain on the altar, you are welcome to take one as long as they last. We also need help following the service this morning carrying boxes up from the basement to stow away the Christmas decorations when they are taken down this week. Might even get your first pick at a poinsettia for those who are helping. The annual meeting will be held on January 28th, immediately following worship. This will be a hybrid meeting, both in person and on Zoom. You will be able to join the Zoom meeting as soon as worship ends. The meeting will begin when technology is in place for Zoom. A link to the Zoom meeting will be sent out the week before the meeting. Looking ahead, Ash Wednesday will be on Wednesday, February 14th at 7 p.m. This service will be in person as well as live streamed on Facebook. Lenten studies will then begin on Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock beginning on February 20th. This will be a hybrid study, both in person and on Zoom. Watch the bulletin for more details as we approach those dates rather quickly. Now from all the places we may be today, let us focus our hearts and minds as we enter into the worship of our God.
please join me in the call to worship. Come, join the search for all God will reveal. We, we are, are the, the church, church committed, committed to, to an, an encounter, encounter with, with mystery. mystery. The good news of the gospel reveals God's grace. In, In God's, God's grace, grace, there is rich variety to meet, to meet each of us where we are. The glory of God has risen upon us, and the radiance of truth surrounds us. Boldly and confidently, we approach the mysteries of our God. Please hear the call to confession. The light of God that has come in Christ can open the hidden mysteries of God. Yet we seem content to remain in the darkness. Rather than opening ourselves to the light of God's grace, we remain committed to following our own ideas and plans. Our focus is on our own understanding, rather than allowing our eyes to be opened to the great and inclusive expanse of God's grace. Let us confess our sins and allow the light of God to illuminate our hearts and minds. Please pray the prayer of confession. God of light and grace, our prayers usually ask your blessings upon the plans of our lives. We know we need your grace to overcome the discontent of our own frustrated endeavors. Forgive us for our self-centeredness. Rather than asking you to bless our plans, let us surrender ourselves to your plan, trusting that we will find our fullest purpose in your mystery. Amen. Amen. We come to God in boldness and in confidence, assured of the gift of grace and forgiveness. Receive light and wholeness, for God has come to dwell in us and among us. Let your hearts rejoice, for in Christ our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. be seated and invite my friends to come for time with many. Oh, yeah. Okay, a good group today on a cold morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Here comes Michaela and Mickey. Have a seat up here with us, Michaela. Very good. Very good. I want to tell you about something. Do you guys like hunting for secrets and treasures? Yeah. Trying to find things that are, might be hidden or buried? It's always fun when you discover something that's been hidden, and you are the one whose eyes spot it. You can find it. Well, I remember when uh, Katie and Elsa were younger, and we made a trip to visit Minnie and Mickey. Uh, at their house, and we were going around, and there was what was called hidden Mickeys. Okay, hidden Mickeys. And what it was was the outline of Mickey Mouse's head. Now, if you look here, we have Mickey. You see the shape of his head? What well, didn't have his face or his nose on it, it, just had the back of his head and his ears like that. And it could have been Minnie without the bow. Maybe she forgot to put on her bow. So I don't know if it was Minnie or Mickey, but they, they, they're called Hidden Mickeys. And they're all over the park, all over the place. And the thing about them is they're right out in the open where everybody could see them, except they're kind of hidden. They're maybe hidden in a painting or in a design of a building or in a window somewhere. Just the, the shape of the back of Mickey or Minnie's head with their ears. That they're like camouflaging? They're camouflaging. That's exactly what they're doing. But they're hidden right where you could see them. But you have to know 
where they are. You have to know they're there. You, don't, you might not know where they are, but to find them, you have to know they're there. You have to be looking for them. Otherwise, you'll walk right by them and they'll they're camouflage. They'll just bl blend right in. Now, here's the other thing that helps you find these hidden Mickeys. If, if your mom or your tour guide's on the ball, she's got a book, right? You don't go there without a book. And there's hints. There's hints in the book about where these might be. Look for a hidden Mickey here. Don't tell you exactly where, but look for it here. You might find one. So those are hidden Mickeys. It was a lot of fun to go through and try to find them and count the ones that you found. And uh, so that's fun. But what if it's not hidden Mickeys that are hiding from us? What if it's, um, what if it's God? What if God is hidden all around us in places that we don't know? But if we know that God is there, we might see it. There's things that help us find God. I wonder, just a quick look around the sanctuary, what might we find? Maybe a stained glass window? You don't see those everywhere. Maybe, maybe it reminds us that this is a place where we can, can experience God, right? Maybe the cross behind me, right? Time, it helps us know and think about about Jesus. One time when I was like looking around quick, I for some sex I thought I saw God. You thought you did. Maybe you did. Maybe you did. We have the communion cup and ch the chalice and the bread on the table today for uh, communion. That helps us think about God. God's hiding right. So we have these hints. We have Bibles, right? We have Bibles that tell us maybe where to look for God, what to expect, to remind us that God is here. If we just look, we'll find God hidden all around us. The other thing we have in church today to help us know the presence of God is we have to know what we're looking for. When I see kindness in people's hearts out here, when I see their smiles, when I see them caring about one another and praying for one another when they're sick, well, that's God's compassion and kindness and caring. That's God's love, and it's hidden in everybody in the sanctuary. And it can be hidden in you, too. There's all kinds of places we'll find the hidden presence of God just waiting to be shown to us. So today we're going to talk about a couple of guys a little bit, the Magi. Remember them from the Christmas pageant? You were a Magi, right? You wore the robe and the crown? Yeah, the wise men? Yeah. I don't know if anybody else was up here, but you were, you were one of them. So they went on a search where to find, look for where baby Jesus would be revealed. So they're going to be our guides. They're going to remind us to look around for God, wherever God might be hidden. And we'll find God where there's kindness. We'll find God in stories in the Bible. We'll find God when we worship. Right? We'll find God's always close to us, hiding, just watching us. That God wants to be discovered. So we have some hints. We have people to help us find all the hidden gods, all the places God's hiding and wants to be found. God, open our eyes and help us find you in all the places that you will surprise us in our lives every day, even at school, at home, and other places. Help us, help us find and discover you're with us. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. invite you to pray with me. Guiding and sustaining God as we begin the journey into a new year, we seek your blessing. Prepare our hearts to follow your direction with passion. Open our eyes to recognize your presence along the way. Shape our spirits by the experiences we will encounter. Let us travel with the courage of the Magi leaving the certainty of what we think we know for the expanse of all that you will reveal if we but enter ever further into your mystery. Bless us with your sustaining presence as we devote ourselves to journeys worth taking, journeys of compassion, mercy, and grace. May your spirit of strength and hope be with those whose journeys grow difficult those who face diagnosis and illness, 
those who mourned the losses of what had brought light and joy to their lives, those whose lives are filled with fear, those whose lives are lived in peril as war rages around them, those who know the isolation and judgment of others that claims and clouds their view of the light of your favor and of their own dignity as your children. Be their strength, be their hope through all these journeys. Let us lift our voices and pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Margie and Matthew. The scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to read the first 12 verses of the third chapter of Ephesians. This is why I, Paul, am a prisoner of Christ for you Gentiles. You've heard, of course, about the responsibility to distribute God's grace, which God gave to me for you, right? God showed me his secret plan in a revelation, as I mentioned briefly before. When you read this, 
you'll understand my insight into the secret plan about Christ. Earlier generations didn't know this hidden plan that God has now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets through the Spirit. This plan is that the Gentiles should be co-heirs and parts of the same body and that they should share with the Jews in the promise of God in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I became a servant of the gospel because of the grace that God showed me through the exercise of his power. God gave his grace to me, the least of all God's people, to preach the good news about the immeasurable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. God sent me to reveal the secret plan that had been hidden since the beginning of time by God, who created everything. God's purpose is now to show the rulers and powers in the heavens the many different varieties of his wisdom through the church. This was consistent with the plan he had from the beginning of time that he accomplished through Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ, we have bold and confident access to God through him in faith. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Epiphany. Ask anybody who has ever worked in a children's pageant. It seems like everybody wants to be the Magi, right? The Magi have bling. They have crowns and big shiny pendants. No tattered robes and sticks like those lowly shepherds. They are wise and bring cool gifts to the Christ child. Who wants to be a stable animal or even a star when you can be one of the magi? Oh, we might not be wealthy or mysterious or even wise, but we want to be one of the magi. Only a few of us have ever mounted a camel, but something deep in our souls resonates with the magi. And we think that we would like to travel with them. Maybe it's because we all feel like there's something out there that we're looking for that seems to elude us. Maybe we've all chased our own bright stars. Maybe we're still looking for the right place, the right someone. Maybe we feel like everybody but us has this thing figured out and we alone are still muddling along, trying to find our way. Maybe the Magi call forth the seeker within each of us to set out on or never give up the quest that calls to our souls. But here's the thing. Even the Magi didn't seem very well suited for the roles they played in the gospel. Joanne Post tells us the Magi did not belong on Jesus' doorstep. They did not belong in the story of salvation. But when they park their camels in the driveway, when Mary opens the door, when they lay their expensive and inappropriate gifts at the feet of a toddler Jesus, they become central characters in the narrative. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe that's what we really want. We just want to be a central character in the narrative. That's okay. God has a central role for each of us and the inclusion of the Magi in the story of Jesus' birth assures us that there is a place for each and every one of us in God's story. Epiphany is about the journey toward discovering our own surprising place in God's story. The scripture reading this morning finds the role of the Magi being played by none other than the Apostle Paul who seems to have felt he didn't belong in the salvation story either. He said so much as of himself in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm the least important of the apostles. I don't deserve to be called an apostle because I harassed God's church. But here he is anyway, just like a magi, finding himself a central character in the narrative. He says he was not written into the script from human authority or commissioned through human agency, but sent through Jesus Christ and God the Father. The Apostle Paul's journey began, as did that of the Magi, at God beckoning him 
when he saw a light from heaven. But that's just the beginning of the journey of discovering more of his character's unfolding role in God's story. For Paul, the discovery of both that story and his role in it was an ongoing journey. He uses some interesting words to describe the ever-breaking light which he followed to arrive at what for him was the right place in the story. In this passage, Paul uses words like secret plan or mystery. In Greek, that word conveys the idea of open secret. He is reaching for the most expansive language he can conjure up to express his thought. Paul seems to envision himself like the Magi, a pilgrim on a journey into the mystery. But this mystery, though it lies unsolved for the most part, lies open to all who, like Paul, follow the light of God as it leads him toward his own place in God's story. Paul seems to have discovered his role as a central character in the narrative by awakening to what God's plan had been all along. Namely, verse 6 reads, this plan is that the Gentiles were co-heirs with God and parts of the same body. They would share with the Jews in the promises of God in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So that's the open secret, the secret plan. It seems like the real mystery here is why the plan had remained a secret. There had been plenty of voices and clues opening this secret through the ages. The prophet Isaiah had written, Nations shall come to your light. Royals shall be drawn to the brightness of your dawn. Yet it took the Magi, the Magi, to lead the way into this open secret. The Magi were both royals and nations. Gentiles from the east who were beckoned by the guiding light of God to find their way into the narrative of God's salvation. A narrative that was vastly more expansive than anyone had been open to imagine. God's mercy and grace, God's favor rested on all people. The good news of great joy was for all people. Paul was saying that when he realized this, when this light dawned on him with this epiphany, he suddenly discovered his role in the narrative. God's purpose for him was to preach the good news about the immeasurable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. It was the same for the Magi who made their way to the Christ child. Once they caught sight of the star, once they followed the light beyond all barriers, much was revealed about Jesus, about God, about their role in the narrative. It dawned on them. Epiphany. They knew what they had to do. Falling on their knees, they honored him. They opened their treasure chest and presented them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Wouldn't you like to have the certainty of the Apostle Paul and the Magi? Wouldn't you like to know what it was that you were supposed to do today, tomorrow, and the day after that? Wouldn't you like to know the hidden plan of God for your life? Wouldn't you like to know where to head next and what to do when you get there? We all have the blood of the Magi flowing through our veins. We all want to be them. It is tradition that tells us that there were three Magi, a tradition that seems to more likely have been based upon the number of gifts presented to the Christ child than anything else. What if there could be more than three Magi? What if we could all be Magi? What if we could pursue the call to be the seeker that lies in each one of us, to set out on, to never give up on the quest that calls to our souls? Paul would tell us that we must first focus on God's secret plan, a plan that God is waiting to shine light on and break open to anyone who is willing to look intently enough to see what others might have missed. When God's mystery opened before Paul, he recognized 
what had been hidden since the beginning of time. The vast expanse of God's inclusive plan for all people. When Paul began to understand the secret of who God was and what God was up to, he knew what he had to do. It was his call to follow what only he had come to see. Like the Magi, he was following and willing to follow the star that only he seemed to have recognized. The same star must have been visible to others, but it was the Magi who were seemingly the only ones who looked up and recognized this star was calling them, and calling them and directing them to the way to find and take their place in the narrative of the story that was dawning around them. The call to each of us, this epiphany, is to follow the star that offers light to us. It will lead us to the place we need to be in order to take our role in the narrative of God's story. But here's the thing about Epiphany's light. It usually only falls on one step of the journey at a time. The Apostle Paul had no idea where his journey would take him when the light fell upon him from heaven. One step at a time, he was led to places unimaginable, staying always within the illuminating rays of God's guiding light. He had just enough light for the next step of his journey. When he was shipwrecked and saw only darkness for days, his prayer was for daylight, just enough light to escape the peril of danger. Whether Epiphany's light explodes with a flash in our eyes or is kindled slowly like an ember within our hearts, it will reveal much to us about God about God's story, and about our place in it. Let Epiphany's star shine deeply within your soul, awakening you to the imagination and guidance that comes only from the depths of who you are and guide you to places only you are being called. Amen.
You may be seated. The most lavish gifts we can bring are never enough to thank God for all we have received. Yet the least of what we bring does not escape God's notice or go beyond God's blessing when given with full commitment and devotion. Let us give as we are able that we and these gifts may be blessed in God's service. I invite you to pray with me as we dedicate our lives and these gifts to God. Giver and sustainer of life, pour out your blessings upon these gifts and upon all who give from their hearts. Multiply them so they can reach further than our imaginations can carry them. In the name of our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. All who would begin this epiphany journey are invited to this table. You are offered these gifts as strength for your journey, as faith may so direct you. The light of this table beckons you like the shining star to find here the grace and mercy of God that shall guide your path toward the fullness of the mystery of Christ. Let us lift our voices in unison as we affirm and renew our faith as printed in the bulletin. Christ is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is in everything Christ may be preeminent. For in Christ all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Christ all things are reconciled to God, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the cross of Christ. 
the night our Lord was betrayed after the Passover feast, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his friends. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after the Passover feast, he took the cup, he blessed it and gave thanks. He said, this cup is my blood, which is poured out for many. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this cup. May they be to us light to guide our way. May they be to us strength for our journey. Amen. Jesus took bread and gave it to his friends, said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus blessed the cup and gave thanks, saying, this is my blood, which is shed for many. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite those who are comfortable doing so to stand for the prayer of thanksgiving and parting hymn. Gracious God, we thank you for guiding our way to this table. Here you have opened our eyes anew to your presence and to your gifts to us through Jesus Christ. You have renewed our strength and courage as we continue the journey of discovering more of your holy nature. Lead us forth in your divine will for our lives as your servants. Let us become the incarnation of your presence wherever we go. Amen. May the light of your star beckon you to follow its light until you find your own place in God's story. Be well. <laughs>